quite an insightful Wednesday morning motivation there from Vince Lombardi talking about perfection and excellence. That being said, good morning. Welcome to the conversation on your Digital First Pan-African News Network, TOS Television. My name is Sagir Ibrahim. And my name is Merciful Ajinomo. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the conversation. How are you doing, Sagir? Doing real good. Good morning. Good morning so to you. So quite a number of things happened mm -hmm. you know, over the course of the week, but I know one that is really the highlight is the electronic transmission of yeah, results. Yeah, that's getting people that talking. Of course. It's, it's, Since yesterday, it's been a roller coaster. And, yes. you know, people are talking. We're having a conversation as to how, you know, we've been having this cry. Before now, there's been ag agitations. There has been even blame games. Mm. But now we're seeing a, a result in what people say is the right direction. So I, I, was, I was just going to ask, ask you, like we've had conversations before now, do you, do you think we're actually on the path to having a, a free and fair election? I think we're on the path to creating a structure that will ensure a free and fair election. Like. All right. So moving forward, let's just commence uh, with developments across Africa, starting with the Central African Republic, where an international criminal court prosecutor on Tuesday said Mahamat Said Abelkind, a former Central African Republic Seleka faction commander, was involved in the beatings and maltreatment of prisoners suspected of supporting ousted President Francois Bozies. And now on um, the International Court of Justice, also known as the World Court, ruled largely in favor of Somalia in a case filed by Somalia against Kenya over contested parts of the Indian Ocean believed to be rich in oil and gas. The court's ruling gives Somalia the rights to exploit oil and gas reserves in the region. Finally, in Burkina Faso, a court has adjourned the trial of the 1987 assassination of Thomas Sankara to October 25 after the defense lawyers asked for more time to prepare their case. Two defense lawyers appointed by the court had asked for a postponement of the trial by one month in the name of the truth, arguing that they had not had enough time to study the 20,000 documents in the file. Quite a number of documents, you know, for a Yes, case. And, and I do hope, like, justice is being served at the end of the day. You know, this has long, it has long been a theme of discussion, mm. you know, in international and history classes as well. And now we're having uh, a 1987 assassination case, you know, come back to the fore. So yeah. we're just hopeful that, justice you know, justice is, yes, is prevailed. All right, uh, we'll go on a quick break. But before then, we'll bring you COVID-19 updates from across Africa, after which we will be bringing you the big story. This is still the conversation showing on your digital first Pan-African news network, that is TOS Television. And you can always be a part of our social media community. Follow us across all our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at TOS TV Network. And also our website, stay updated on happenings from Nigeria and of course across Africa, www.tostvnetwork.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. At this moment, we talk about the happening story. That is the big story. And that's Electoral Act, Senate backtracks, accept electronic transmission of result. Joining us via the telephone is Mustafa Aliyu, a public affairs analyst. You're welcome to the show, sir. Good morning, Yo, Thank sir. you very much. Good thank morning. You. Thank you for inviting me. Thank oh, you. Okay. Thank the pleasure you is ours. Great. Okay, I'm um, straight to the point. After months of bashings and cries from the general public, over resolution on electronic transmission of results. Uh, the Senate yesterday, you know, rescinded its decision. What does this mean for Nigeria? Um, Nigeria, Ni Nigerians as a people should have hope in democracy. That's what it basically means. And the fact still remains that we can be stagnant on issues that are not going to benefit us as a country, as a government. We should move from we, we, we should have moved past this stage, but the said is never late. And uh, we are going to be looking at the affairs going forward to see that this whole process is finally actualized where Nigerians, Nigerians can actually have the, the deserved democracy that they have been looking for all this while. So it's, it's all, it's laudable by the Senate 
because we are supposed to be doing things that are uh, of 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 great landmark. Something that when you leave a particular place, people to come, generations to come, we 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 give you that credit deserving of who you are because you people actually made something happen. And this particular issue is a big one and is something that I have to give kudos to the civil societies who have been talking and who have been saying all that is right for this particular issues to be looked at as it is right now. So it's hope for Nigerian democracy and for Nigeria in general. It's hope. All right, Mr. Mustafa, so I want to ask, this is 2021, and it took a good number of about 10 years or more to ensure that this bill became, at least this bill passed and became a reality. And we also saw that the issue of direct primaries by political parties was also passed. It was brought up and it was also passed by, you know, the National Assembly. So the question I want to ask is, should we always expect that it takes this long to ensure that certain things which are beneficial and integral to Nigeria's democracy and the lives of ordinary Nigerians pass through such a long and vigorous process, you know, before becoming a reality? Um, it's not um, a good one to wait this long for issues that are basically like this one, but um, it's better late than never mm -hmm. when, you, when, when, when we're talking about issues like this. Because the truth of the matter is we definitely have to understand our political terrain. We have some class of political uh, um, 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 personalities who probably don't even understand the, the drive, the motive behind all this. This is about we, the masses. This is about we, the voters. It's not about them. They are all just thinking about their personal interests of becoming there. If it's going to be a lifetime pos position, they really don't care. But for we Nigerians, it's better late than never. And mm. going forward, things that have to change the demography, the, 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 the insight of what Nigerians are all about should not be kept long to this point where people start gla um, uh, clamoring and start asking for rights they are deserving of theirs. So it's, it's, it's a good one that is actually um, coming now, even though it's late. But going forward, the, the, the Senate, the legislation, the, the, the legislative arm of government to try as much as possible to see that issues like this, delicate issues like this, are being looked at properly because if it was going to benefit them initially from the beginning, from the onset, this this could have been a a a a, a, a a a talk of the past. But this is something that they are trying to look at critically to see if it's going to favor them or not. But this is not about them. Democracy is not about them. Democracy is about the people. Mm. You understand? So if they are getting scared, let them do the right work. Let them do the work that they have been sent there to do and do it well and mm. do it on time. Mm. So right. that is my take. All right. Um, Mr. Mustafa, one of want to get your opinion yes. or your position on all of the issues that was debated on the floor yesterday. And that's the issue of direct or indirect primaries Primates. when it comes to election. Mm. I want to know where do you stand? Definitely. Okay. Direct. It's, it's so direct that I should stand for direct because the all corruption of politicking ringing starts from the first point of indirect mm. primaries where you have delegates that can be bribed that can be a uh, 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 short change for a purpose of someone else's interest mm. a lot of politicians pocket their delegates in their various pockets you really don't have a say when a group of people choose for you something that is not what you want so if it's going to be direct and that is what I stand for, direct. So it's direct that is good enough that people should always have their choices, no matter how it is. People should always have their choices because it's not a issue of bringing people to vote for majority of their theirs. It's an issue of majority voting for who they want to be their leader at mm. every point in time. So mm. direct is the best and direct is the way forward. 
All right, thank you so much, thank Mr. You. Mustafa, for featuring on the conversation this morning. And we do hope that you come on the show, you know, sometime in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. by extension, that's it for the conversation this morning. Remember, the conversation comes to you weekdays, Monday to Friday, here on your digital first Pan-African News Network, TOS Television. And you could be part of the conversation by connecting with us on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TOS TV Network. You could watch the conversation via our website at www.tostvnetwork.com, as well as via YouTube at TOS TV Network. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Sagir Ibrahim. And my name is Mesafullah Jinimo. Thank you again for joining us. See you tomorrow.